today I'm going to follow one of London's lost rivers, the buried River Walbrook. From a little bit of research that I've done, and uh, I've got a sketch map in my bag, which is based on Fitzstevens's map of Norman London. It shows one uh, possible location of the source of the Walbrook as being here, at St Leonard's Church, the famous St Leonard's Church. I think there's two branches. One is a little bit further north beyond Old Street, so I'm going to pick it up here at St Leonard's. I did this walk almost seven years ago to the day, but I didn't actually start here. I started a little bit further down near uh, Moorgate. So uh, it's not a very long walk, but it's a great walk. The slight dilemma I have though is I've, I've booked a, a slot to have a look at the London Mithraeum, the Temple of Mithras, which sits right on the banks of the Woodbrook at four o'clock. And it's now half past two, so I've got an hour and a half. But it's about, uh, it's not very far at all actually. We've got this remains of what looks like an old uh, water pump here in the churchyard of St Leonard's. So that may have been drawing water from the spring that fed the river. So from here at St Leonard's, the Walbrook is said to have basically followed the line of Curtain Road, but before that it runs through or near the site of the uh, Shoreditch Holy Well, which I believe was in Bateman's Row. I've read that somewhere. I think probably in Fitzstephen. And the site of the Shoreditch Holy Well is just over the road here. So we'll go there and then we'll pick up uh, in uh, Curtain Road. So we're gonna cross the old Roman Ermine Street here. You see me walk sections of this further north. Rivington Street. This area does just make me think of uh, Nathan Barley, the prophetic Charlie Brooker scripted TV show. This is called French Place and it does lead round into Bateman's Road, but I think here you can see a significant dip off the road. You can see a lower lying area there, sometimes an indicator of a stream. But that is said to be the site of the Shoreditch Holy Well on the back here, between here and Bateman's Row. Let's go have a look. So that's Bateman's Row running along there. I think this now cobbled yard here, I think this was uh, where the Holy Well was last uh, recorded. I could have that completely wrong. Um, but it was somewhere around here and it was knocked down quite some time ago. I wonder if we're going to find any clues to the course of the Walbrook in the copious amounts of street art in the area. One of the things that Shoreditch is best known for now, isn't it? Once the furniture industry, now it's street art. Into Bateman's Row. One of the things you often notice about buried streams is we don't tend to build over them. And bear in mind the uh, value of building land around here. The fact that there's these massive areas of vacant land here is interesting. This is Anning Street. So I'm gonna take this as the course of the river for now in the uh, absence of any other solid information um, because this will hopefully lead me into Curtain Road. Curtain Road runs parallel to here on the right. Curtain Road runs along there. This building here has been in this state for a number of years, which is surprising when you look at all the towers of glass and steel around us. I do love a good river walk, whether they're above the ground or whether they're buried. This kind of river walk is really interesting because you're being guided through the city by something unseen. And uh, when I did this walk seven years ago, it was fantastic. I did it in the dark, I did it in the evening, it was brilliant. There are a number of diff 
different uh, theories on the course of the river. The definitive book of London's Lost Rivers is Nicholas Barton's book, of course, as I'm sure you already know. And in Barton, he speculates on the course. Until we get on the other side of London Wall, then it's pretty clear. But up to that point, so actually, no, actually, there's been some excavations recently. So up to Finsbury Circus, there's a little bit of debate. Beyond there, we kind of know where it goes, more or less. John Stowe, the most famous of all historians of London, wrote of the Walbrook in 1598. This watercourse, having divers bridges, was afterwards vaulted over with brick and paved level with the streets and lanes where through it passed. And since that, also houses have been built thereon, so that the course of the Walbrook is now hidden underground and thereby hardly known. So when I came before seven years ago, they were doing some of the crossrail work around Finsbury Circus, and that's where I spoke to some of the workers there, and they confirmed where the river, where they'd found the Woolbrook running deep below the street. There's a sale over there of streetwear, Stussy clothes. Pound to go in and have a look. As Jack D said, you can look around the best shops in the world for free. Pound to go in, it's going to be brilliant. <laughs> This is where uh, Shakespeare cut his teeth, here. It's the Curtain Theatre. And it says there, it confirms it's near the site of the Shoreditch Holy Well. And I think there were quite a few theatres around here. Over there it says London's first theatre land. And of course it would have been close to the banks of the Woolbrook as well. It's a Curtain Road running down there. And the river was said to flow along the line of what is today Curtain Road, lined by trees. I know I've shown it in previous videos, but that is possibly one of my favourite bits of uh, public art in the country. We're going to stick to the course of the river, but looking down here, Actually, those streets around the back there, you get a real sense of the topography of this part of the city, actually. You see the undulations in the land. So that would be the high ground, I think, rising above the Woolbrook. Our route takes us down here, along Curtain Road. It's interesting to see the way that the interest in London's lost rivers, and it's, you know, the rivers that haven't been lost, and the interest in that has really kind of taken off over the last sort of 20 years really. For a long time, Nicholas Barton's book was the only book about London's Lost Rivers. And then going back before that, you had mentions in other topographical books, Wonderful London, for example. And there's a great map of London's rivers. And there's an article there, and I'll put a link below to that on my, on my blog. But then, I don't know when it started, Tim Bradford wrote his wonderful book, The Brown Water Diaries, and then there just seemed to be a kind of a flood <laughs> of, uh, of books about London's Lost Rivers. And I think if you look online, you'll probably find, I don't know, 20 books now about that. It's great to see. It's fantastic that we're finally taking an interest. A great snapshot here of change in London. Some old sort of buildings here, probably Victorian, possibly even older. And then the site new development here. This little avenue of trees recently planted in Broadgate Quarter as they're calling it now which runs just adjacent to Curtain Road. It may hark back to the avenue of trees that lined Curtain Road when the Woolbrook was running free above the ground. So this is Appold Street, I think it's pronounced, that runs off the end of Curtain Road. And we know that the Woolbrook runs along uh, Blomfield Street. Uh, it was excavated during the Crossrail Works. So what I'm going to do is more or less follow a straight line to Blomfield Street, imagining the course of the river. And actually, when you look here, look, you can see a kind of curve in the road reminiscent of the course of a river, the bend in a river. 
I don't think this development here was actually um, was actually built when I last did the walk seven years ago. I think this is new because I walked around Sun Street. And now it looks like I might be able to walk through this enormous space here. And we're still outside the, uh, the northern wall of the old Roman city. Although actually, what's interesting to note is that you've got the Corporation of London Bollards there. One interpretation of the name Wallbrook is very literal, meaning the Wall Brook, the brook which breaches the London Wall. But Peter Ackroyd proposes a different explanation of the name, that it is derived from Weller Brock, meaning the Brook of the Welsh, which suggests that there was still a defined quarter for the old Britons in their ancient city. So the little blue dot there is where I currently am. And this is uh, Blomfield Street, which is where we know the course of the river is running. So it's sort of slightly over there behind that building. And you can see this massive building site here. This huge new building. And it's very possible that somewhere down there is the Woolbrook running free. It's a shame there's no one around to talk to. So a section of the Woolbrook was discovered running under the street here, along the course of uh, Blomfield Street. It's gurgling away beneath our feet. It's one of the most important rivers of, of Roman and medieval London. A river that divided the city in two. I'm going to go hopefully to the Mithraeum and that was built on the on the western bank of the um, of the Woolbrook and it'd be interesting to see if that is significant in any way whether it meant that you know worshippers of Mithras had to stay on a particular side of the river I don't know it'd be interesting up there is Finsbury Circus and they were doing that work when I walked through here seven years ago and here it is 2018 and they're still doing the work for Crossrail so here we are London Wall the historic Roman Wall of London running along here and in the Middle Ages the Woolbrook was said to have breached the Wall of London just to the west of that church you can see there which is more or less where I'm stood now Copful Avenue this was the route I took seven years ago because it leads into a little area called Angel Court where there were excavations but they uncovered a section of the Woolbrook and they made some interesting finds. Just over there is the entrance to Angel Court, the entrance to uh, an ancient part of the city. A note in the London Topographical Record of an excavation of Angel Court in 1974 reports that they uncovered a portion of the river, noting that it dominated the original topography and habitation of the district north of Lothbury and Throgmorton Street. Remains of a Roman embankment were also discovered, along with Roman relics, coins, shoes and painted wall plaster. Hundreds of stylae for writing were also discovered, where scribes had tossed them from their windows into the water. We'll pass through this passageway here. I love the alleyways of the City of London. That would be another good video to do, wouldn't it? Pass through here, out into uh, Lothbury, behind the Bank of England. So here we are, basically at the back of the Bank of England. Here it is, it's where your money comes from. In the street called Lothbury, apparently fortified enclosure of Lotha, a Kentish chieftain who had an a enclosure within the uh, old city of London. And I think you can see here the uh, dip in the road that indicates where the Walbrook runs beneath the vaults of the Bank of England. I put my finger roughly there. It's that line there in the road. I've got about 10 minutes to get to the Mithraeum, otherwise I'll miss my slot and it's the last one of the day. We're going to go around the, um, the edge of the Bank of England. This is Threadneedle Street, famous Threadneedle Street. And then we're going to pick up 
Walbrook, the street called Walbrook, which is where we know that the, uh, the Walbrook runs down that street, past the Mithraeum, the Temple of Mithras, and then down Dowgate Hill, where it enters the Thames. So this is where you've got Bank Station, and Walbrook is just on the other side here of this junction. So I better go quickly. So here we go, this is Walbrook, just over from the bank. And this is where the river runs beneath the street down to the Thames and where the Mithraeum is. And I think I've just got time to get there for four o'clock. One of the old city churches here, or what remains of it. So here it is, the London Mithraeum. Now, I don't think I'm allowed to video in there, so I'll have to just tell you about it afterwards. magical experience, the London Mithraeum, the Temple of Mithras. And what I really like about the way that they've done it is that the way that you descend from present day street level, and the level of Roman London is about nine meters beneath the ground at this point. So they take you down through the layers of history. So you descend, finally entering the cave of the Temple of Mithras. It's the perfect thing to do on a walk along the Walbrook. Uh, the other thing I would say is that the location of the temple doesn't appear to have any significance uh, in terms of its relationship to the river. As far as I could tell, there was no mention of that. It's just about the neighbourhood that had grown up on the banks of the Walbrook. Not necessarily that somehow that the river was in any way meaningful to the, uh, myth, the cult of Mithras. I've got to do the final bit of the walk now. I've got to go down Dowgate Hill to the River Thames. But I've just realised that it's half past four when I'm at lunch. So. Are these the waters of the Walbrook which have been allowed to flow above ground? Seems to be uh, harking back to that tradition, doesn't it? I feel refreshed now. So it's just down the side of Cannon Street Station. There's Dowgate Hill and that's where meanders the river Walbrook. Well, I suppose at this point it's not really meandering, is it? It's probably on a fairly straight course for the Thames. Interesting, the route of the river is marked by a number of churches um, and the lady in the Bloomberg Centre there, in the Mithraeum, the guide there, Donna, who was brilliant by the way, um, thank you Donna, she said that apparently the foundations of the church there at the end of Walbrook had been undermined by the river. So this is Cousin Lane and it continues straight on from Dowgate Hill following the course and at the end of the street here, past the river building, you have the River Thames which I guess is what that is a reference to rather than the Walbrook but who knows. And here at the end of Cousin Lane we have Walbrook Wharf right on the banks of the River Thames look we'll just pop through here and there is the sacred Thames. Now we might be able to see the Walbrook trickling out of a pipe but I doubt it because it's a bit dark isn't it? So the first time I did this walk, seven years ago, um, I got the inspiration to do it from a photograph in a copy of Wonderful London of some men stood on these steps that I'm sitting on right now. And it mentioned that this was the point where the Walbrook entered the Thames. And that was why I did that walk. I was basically just retracing, really, that photograph back to its source. It's a, it's a really beautiful photograph. And I love walks like that, where you just have one little hint and you just unpick it and it evolves into this journey, this expedition. And so it's great to be down here on these steps again. So 
So down here is the confluence of the Thames and the Walbrook, and as we know, the confluence of two rivers was considered sacred in pagan belief, and offerings would be made. So it makes you wonder what offerings were cast in to the waters down here. The skulls of uh, Roman citizens and Roman soldiers that were most likely executed by the followers of Boudicca have also been found in the Walbrook. Not as ritual offerings, but as a result of the sacking of London by Boudicca's army. It's very unlikely we'll see anything. I'll use my phone torch to illuminate the scene, but you can hear that trickling water there under the bridge here, underneath Cannon Street Station. That's where the Walbrook comes out. It's absolutely pitch black, unfortunately. I like the way. Here's the Thames. So there's this here on the wall. I don't think that is it. There's a pipe up there. That's it either. Well, thank you so much for coming on that walk with me along the, the River Woolbrook, one of London's lost rivers, one of its sacred streams. What a brilliant experience. Particularly enjoyed the Mithraeum. That was uh, incredible. I highly recommend that if you can get here. It was brilliant. So I'll see you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Who knows? It could be anywhere.